Chirang is a part of this whole what we call as BTAD, Bodoland Territorial Administered Districts. And Chirang is the smallest district and one of the most underdeveloped of the lot because it's always been a cusp, you know, between Bongaigaon, Kokrajhar and other districts. So even now this is uh, carved out of Bongaigaon and Kokrajhar. So therefore, like, you know, it's neither here nor there because of that it being a border district, you know, and we are bordering Bhutan. So, a lot of underdevelopment has happened here. We and the people residing here struggle to survive because of which we find it difficult to educate our children. Besides, the government has not provided us any support. Thus, we are facing a lot of difficulties here. There are no benches to sit in the school. During monsoon, there is water logging everywhere. The school is 5 to 6 kilometers from home and every day my children have to walk to access school and so it is very difficult during monsoon. Besides, the roads are not safe and so they can't go to school. As there is no electricity in the area, we have to make our children study under lamp. So we cannot educate our children. We never touched uh, education as such because we felt that there's a large uh, students' union over here working. Uh, but uh, we kind of slowly realized that the state of education is so poor in this area. And child rights, you know, children's issues, nobody is talking about it at all. And especially in a place which is recovering from conflict. A lot of the struggle is around like uh, issues of daily survival. Children and, you know, young people's issues are nobody's concerns. See, most of our children here fail in science, maths and English. These are three subjects which are very weak. And here especially because we have very few science teachers here in Assam. And because science is so weak in the schools and in our community, we introduce something called a Science on Wheels program. It's to supplement science education and maths education in the schools, you know, in government schools. So we are reaching out to almost like 1200 students on a regular basis, like through our science van in nine government schools. And we work only in government schools because that's where we feel the poorest are forced to send their children also. They don't have any other alternative. And especially we are getting more worried because a lot of girls, you know, the girl child is sent to a government school if you have less resources. Girls are like, you know, you drop out much faster at any kind of excuse. Because, you know, your concern for education of girls is much lesser. So now up till middle school, LP school, primary school, somehow children manage. And somehow like they stay in school. But we see that either it is in the middle school, class 7, 8, or after that, 9th and 10th is where you need to start paying your fees. So parents can't afford it. Or, you know, your school becomes very far. So you have a primary school around you, but you don't have middle school, high schools around you. So you don't have a cycle to access the schools. So because of these reasons, girls drop out very quickly. I know the ant very well since the ant is helpful to all. The ant works for bettering the lives of disadvantaged sections. They form youth groups in the villages. Many youth are involved in these groups and lots of activities are being done with youth. In this way, social issues are also being addressed. They also give us knowledge on the issues of child marriage and help in fighting 
to end the domestic violence. After passing my class 10 exam, I did not have money for admission. My parents too were unable to support me financially. At that time, I got scholarship of rupees 2000 from the end. Rest of the money was borrowed with which I could get the admission. So I am very much thankful for this help. So our whole work with children and youth is that to try and develop this whole range of, uh, you know, uh, means and methods by which children can grow, develop, you know, gain these and gain and access opportunities. So that's the core of this. And to do this, we use various means. So sports, culture, whether it is through games, uh, these are the various ways in which we do because sports help you channelize your, you know, energies uh, physically and also build you up as your confidence and as a team. We have girls football as a means of like really getting, uh, you know, girls energized and it's a right of girls to play. The end supported me and provided me a coach. Francis Nagzari, my coach taught me how to play football. The end initiated games and revival of traditional culture in our village. We also benefited from various children group activities, youth parliament and playing football. When I first started playing, there was a lot of pressure from the society, due to which my family too used to pressurize me not to play. But I continued playing football. When I was selected to play for the state level football game, I was really happy. Later. Everyone appreciated and my family is happy and supportive now. Apart from that, we feel traditional culture is something that young people should be proud of and, you know, should rightly be, you know, the community forte in any uh, situation. But that's getting eroded. So we promote traditional cultural troops. So in a place like this where singing and dancing uh, of the traditional uh, songs and music is like, dying very very fast and many places is dead because of taped music we are trying to revive that so getting young people again uh, interested in their culture